वेलकम एवरी वन टू अर्जुन एरीगाइसी टेकिंग ऑन जाओ खीर सिंदारो दिस इज देयर सेकेंड क्लासिकल गेम द फर्स्ट वन एंडेड इन अ ड्रॉ वेर अर्जुन वॉज प्रेसिंग थ्रू आउट बट नाउ अर्जुन हैज द वाइट पीसेस एंड ही स्टार्ट ऑफ विद पॉन अप टू ई फोर जाओ खीर प्लेज ई फाइव नाउ जस्ट नोटिस हाउ अर्जुन मेक्स इज मूव एंड प्रेस इज द क्लॉक एंड हाउ जाओ खीर डज इट you know he plays naturally and he taps the clock a little hard arjun does it so softly it's the ruy lopez on the board bishop to b5 jawakir attacks the bishop and arjun plays it back to a4 now knight comes out to f6 hitting the pawn on e4 arjun goes for the main line with short castle and now jawakir plays the sharp open ruy lopez taking the pawn and uh, arjun thinks for a bit you can see him looking in the distance that is a very very natural way for arjun to think whenever he's deep in calculation he tries to look away from the board he's thinking blindfolded and he plays his pawn up to d4 now jawo kills open ruy lopez small surprise for arjun there and that's the reason why he took a bit of time bishop b3 and now pawn up to d5 this is all well known theory and now white generally picks up the pawn on e5 arjun thinks for a bit to see if there are any side lines he wants to go for no he goes for the main line now attacking the pawn on d5 so the bishop comes out and defends itself defends the pawn and now many moves exist you can go c3 knight d2 these are the main moves also there is bishop e3 and arjun wants to be sure that the line he plays gives him good winning chances with the white pieces so he goes knight bd2 challenging the knight in the center now jawakir has a few options here he goes for the knight c5 move now it's interesting in normal ruy lopez you don't want to give up this bishop but here you are fine because if black takes you can take with the knight looking at these important squares So Sindaro just develops his bishop to e7 and now the bishop goes to c2 looking at this beautiful long diagonal d4 played Arjun plays his knight to b3 now there are two main moves in this position one is to push forward other is to take Jawakir plays the more ambitious move d3 now this pawn can become a strength as well as a weakness it can become anything pawn takes for the time being the pawn is hanging with the bishop and the queen but sindaro gets his bishop to f5 and defends the pawn arjun now has to decide what to do because jawok here is blitzing out his moves he's at 1 hour 36 minutes and so arjun is taking his time and he goes for the move b4 this is still not a novelty it has been played before and I'm sure that Jawakir Sindaro is still in his preparation. So he takes a bit of think here. Is generally if Sindaro is well prepared, he simply blitzes out his moves. But here he takes around 5 minutes on the clock and he castles. Who oh, is planning to castle? But he will castle, I believe. Yes, he castles it out. For Arjun to attack the pawn on d3 is not a simple thing. He can go rook e1, rook e3, but then black can meanwhile also come queen d7, rook d8. So he goes first bishop f4, developing his bishop. Now notice that with the move b4, what Arjun has done is that he's fixed the pawn on a6 as a weakness, and that could hurt Jawakir in the long run. While the bishop is kind of passive because the of the pawn on d3. the rook is active on the a file how does black continue in this position maybe queen d7 connecting the rooks seems like the best idea sindaro goes queen d7 plays it sindaro is one of the biggest talents of uzbek chess and he is you know taking chess very seriously h3 still following some of the top games Fabiano versus Mamed Diaro is one of them also Vishy Anand has played this position with black pieces Jawakir is here at this tournament with uh Wakidov who is 
his trainer and second and also he helped Ding Liren in his world championship match. By the way, G4 played here by Arjun hitting the bishop. Now taking here does not make sense because the bishop simply drops back and white is winning. So that's the reason why you have to move the bishop away. Now one could really argue here as to what is Arjun actually achieving by playing these moves. Doesn't it just weaken his king? Well, the point is that these pawns actually limit black's pieces and at some point if Arjun gets bishop g3 and knight h4, he can actually eliminate this all important bishop. So bishop g3 is an excellent move. Now Sindaro should think about playing his pawn up to a5. It's a good move. You can get rid of the weakness on a6 square. And in general, it's a good idea to play that way. But there's also some other possibilities like king h8 with the idea of perhaps f6 later on. For example, if you play f6 right now, e6 is very powerful. And you can't take here because bishop a2 and it pins the queen to the king. So that's the reason why Sindarov plays king h8 and he tells Arjun that now my threat is f6 because no longer e6 would be powerful. So it's a very subtle move but it seems to be working. Um, and Arjun who is still at 134 while Sindarov has gone down to 55 minutes is still looking in the distance. This is dangerous. Yes, when Arjun looks in the distance, he still is in his prep rook e1 and now this rook has come here so that when f6 is played you still go e6 with the control of the rook behind the pawn so that's the idea now sindarov has to still think of one way forward a5 does lo look like a decent option he goes queen to c8 the queen drops back on c8 and it has to be assessed now how white proceeds. So one way is to go rook e3, trying to attack this pawn, which is logical, but black will play a5 and try to create play on the other side. You will see that Arjun here thinks for a very long time. And the best move here is knight h4. Because then you are planning to take this bishop and if you take on h4, then I can take back with my bishop. And this is a good position. So will Arjun find that? And while we are looking at this some sort of a time lapse, you can see Arjun is hardly looking at the board. He is looking here and there, looking at the distance. And finally, he's ready to make his move. And he plays knight to h4. Very logical move. And with the knight coming out here, he wants to attack the bishop on g6. So Sindarov doesn't really want to lose this bishop, right? Because if you lose it, then the pawn on d3 is very, very weak. So that's the reason why he chops off the knight. And now Arjun must recapture. But with that, he will be attacking the rook. So... In a way, you can imagine that Sindaro comes well prepared to the game, so does Arjun. They play some 18-19 moves of theory and then now on move 22, Arjun already has got a substantial edge. Which can mean that Sindaro's prep has not been up to the mark. The rook is attacked and he plays d2 and he is hoping that this pawn... Uh, remains on the board but even if it goes away like he has to lose this then the e5 pawn can be taken now the rook is hanging so it has to be protected rook comes out to d5 and arjun has a few options now firstly he can go bishop a2 and move the rook away because let's imagine if you go here take i can go queen d2 with a very good position my rook is coming in the other option is that you don't move your bishop away and you actually trade it. And this is something which Arjun is thinking about whether he should take on g6 or not. And he decides to chop off the bishop, which is a, a good move. He takes it here. 
two ways to recapture you can take with the h pawn and the f pawn i guess taking with the f pawn is slightly more risky so sindaro captures towards the center and plays h takes g6 his king is safe on h8 now arjun here takes the pawn on d2 and a very logical move if you were to play rook takes e5 then bishop would drop back and somehow this battery of the rook and queen is quite dangerous so first sindaro takes on d2 arjun recaptures and now his point was that he wants to take the pawn on e5 to restore the material balance taking on e5 has happened and think carefully now the knight is coming to f3 to give a check the queen can actually move to b7 so for arjun the next move is pretty natural he puts his queen on d5 centrally posted hitting the knight looking at the rook and overall a good move for white now what does black do here black decides to play his queen to e8 and now here is the moment where arjun has to think a bit what are the possibilities for him you see one possibility is rook e1 but that is absolutely a blunder because after check you will lose the rook so you can't do that you may want to actually prepare it with king g2 but then black has knight to c4 which is a very very useful move so arjun starts to think at this moment when he has one hour on the clock so he has a lot of time he's 32 moves ahead on the clock but now if you look at rook e1 does not work you may think let's go bishop g3 attacking here but once again the knight comes and attacks the b2 pawn and it's not very comfortable because if you play b3 suddenly the rook comes in and then the knight comes to d2 attacking b3 trying to come to f3 so there are problems the right move here and the best move is actually queen e4 and it's a very interesting move because if you go knight c4 i want to take take and already your pawn is hanging on a6 but if you don't play it and you try and let's say save your knight this way now i can go bishop g3 and put pressure here i'm anyway threatening to exchange the queens and take on a6 so queen e4 is not at all an easy move in fact arjun's mind could be attracted by the move f4 because here after knight c4 there is the move rook e1 and it keeps white's advantage intact but look at arjun's time from 1 hour he has come down to 24 minutes 23 in fact and now 22 he plays f4 this is just unbelievable and sindaro instantly was ready with his response of g5 he did not even consider knight c4 now if arjun were to capture here then after g h4 and next move rook d8 black should be fine if you take on g5 here with the bishop then perhaps after knight c4 there is no rook e1 and with queen coming in this does look very dangerous so arjun plays his rook to e1 and his point is that if you take here now on h4 my rook enters and with these two centralized pieces and rook coming to h5 you are in big trouble So Sindaro finds another good move he plays c6 forcing Arjun to take on e5 and now we are going into an end game queen takes now you can take with the rook you can also take with the pawn taking with the rook means the rook will be then activated down to the 7th rank or to the 5th uh, rank or 7th uh, here but he plays pawn takes and now after g takes h4 what Arjun wants to do is he wants to maybe put his rook on a1 that seems to be his idea he goes rook a1 and in the background we have magnus carlson who just came and looked at the game now with rook a1 arjun is putting pressure here the best move for black is rook b8 activate the rook if you win this come down here if you win this take the b2 pawn yes you are pawn down but your rook is active this pawn is weak the king is cut off completely this should end in a draw so sindaro should definitely consider activating his rook to d8 it is the best move in the position but he in fact goes for is touching his rook c8 he puts his rook on c8 this is kind of the first inaccuracy here but it's still fine 
Sindaru's idea is that if you take here Arjun, I want to play c5. So yes, after rook takes a6, he wants to play c5, get rid of his weakness. And then after b takes c5, which Arjun will most likely play, he will take with the rook and then attack the e5 pawn. And Sindaro has only 4 minutes left on the clock. Arjun has 20. We are on move 34. So he takes on c5 and now attacking this pawn. So, well, Arjun, maybe the best way to continue is push his pawn, trade it. Yes, he does. Pushes his pawn. And now after a trade, f takes e6, rook takes e6. The problem is rook d5 is an extremely strong move. And now the rook is coming in here or here and then check and attacking this pawn or even to d3 to attack h3. And the position is equal. So Arjun is completely, um, you know, fine but also Sindaro is totally okay the game would most likely end in a draw if Sindaro finds this more rook d5 but he blunders with b4 and that's a big mistake because yes Sindaro did calculate that after rook c2 he has great play by cutting the king off and b2 is hanging but what he missed is the simple retreating move by Arjun and this on move 37 white has got now close to decisive advantage let's try to understand why this is decisive Mainly because after Arjun takes back with the pawn, white will be a pawn up. Secondly, the rook is ideally located on e3, defending the c3 pawn and the h3 pawn. And thirdly, the king has not been cut off on the last rank here, which means that you can actually activate your king, which is one of the most important things in the end game. And that is exactly what Arjun does. He brings his king up to f2. And now Sindaro in big trouble because what Arjun does is king e2, maybe king d3, push the pawn to c4. And this rook on e3 also cuts off the black king from coming into the game. Now Arjun plays his king up to e2. Very useful. And if Sindaro were to go king g5 here trying to enter... Then rook f3 is a powerful move cutting the king off. So he goes king f6. And now Arjun can play his king to d3 with the idea of c4, c5. He goes king d3. And while this position is slightly tricky still, Arjun is doing it nicely. Now rook d5 check. We have crossed 40th move so both players have enough time. The king comes up to c4. And what Sindarov essentially has to do is go rook d8. Yes. And now his point is, Arjun, if you go king b5, I'll give you a check. If you go king a6, I'll come back. And you won't be able to push your pawn easily. And if you come further ahead, I'll come here. Somehow, it's not so easy to push the pawn. So Arjun goes here, king c5. And this is very interesting, the way in which Arjun is doing this. Notice how he manages to create the play. He first goes king d5. Now, every pawn push that happens, it takes away the space from the black rook on the last rank to give checks here and so on. So, Sindaro doesn't want the pawn to push. So, that's the reason why he gives a check. And now Arjun plays his king up to c6 and you would be wondering, what is Arjun doing here? Well, the thing is that now once again his plan is c4, so you must give a check, right? You, that's what Sindaro wants to do, he gives a check. And now, Arjun, if he plays king d6 here, that is a very smart move, which most likely he does. No, he goes king d7, okay, very interesting. So, his point here is that rook is attacked, you have to move to c4, and now, after the next move, king to d6, white has a check here and also the idea is to go king d5 and then c4, c5. This is the plan. So he goes rook a4. Rook goes to a4 and now Sindarov says that if you go king d5, I will still either pin you 
or I'll give you some checks. That is his idea. But can Arjun simply give this check, which is very important. Whenever the two kings are separated by one file, you give a check to cut the king off. And now the king has to move away. So now the black king is cut off. Now there are few ways to think about this position. One way is that you want to push this pawn ahead, which is what Arjun wants after king d5. But the other point to note is that white can actually give a check, king moves back and then go rook h5 and win the pawn on h4. So he goes rook a3 here, attacking this pawn, rook f5 check. Now the king moves back and this is the key moment now. This is what Arjun had actually thought of king d4 and his point is he doesn't want to even touch this pawn. Check he will not move the pawn up because then rook comes down and maybe attacks here and it gets into some kind of a race. What he's going to do is he's going to just drop his king back to d3. You can see Arjun just making sure all the calculations are correct. And if you were to go rook a1 with the idea of rook h1 to attack here, I go rook h4, or rook h5, rook h1 and I take this and I am two pawns up. So Arjun has done this very clinically, you know, this entire thing, rook d, rook a8. And now rook h5, rook h4 is hanging. You can see Javokir Sindaro already feels like he has lost this game rook h5 he will be two pawns down and that position will be beyond salvation king f6 take the pawn seems logical arjun is now two pawns up well sindarov tries to push his pawn and hopes that this pawn can limit two of white pawns but that's not going to be the case. Rook h7 by Arjun cutting the king off by the rank on the 7th rank. Now the black king cannot move backwards. So Sindaro gives a check. The king will most likely move back. And once Arjun has finished his expedition with the rook taking this pawn, it's now time to push the c pawn. So king e5 played. Now pushing the c pawn would not be a good idea because of king d4 and attacking here. But instead he goes rook f7, king e4. And what he wants to do now is play rook to f5. Very good move. Taking this pawn. So even though Sindarov might get the h pawn, he will be two pawns down. Takes here. Rook takes h3. And this two pawns is a easy win uh, you can go king b3 you can move your rook king b3 the idea is king b4 c4 c5 you just go step by step sindaro resigns and arjun has won and immediately after the game arjun says that instead of b4 you should have gone rook d5 here and that would have been a draw well i leave you with the analysis of these young young talents but suffice it to say Arjun played a very nice game.